If you will, open with me to Mark chapter 1, and I want to study verses 1 through 8 with you today. And it talks about John the Baptist, and he's not a Southern Baptist, he's not a Northern Baptist, he's not one of these factional denominations. All Christians should be one body of believers. But we have here John who is characterized in his ministry by baptizing people. So I like to call him John the Baptizer, but everyone knows him as John the Baptist. But he prepared the way of Jesus, the one to come who was mightier than even John. And so I want to read this text for you. Verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Then all the land of Judea and those from Jerusalem went out to him and were all baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, There comes one after me who is mightier than I, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to stoop down and loose. I indeed baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Before we discuss even further, let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that it's faithful, that it's true. Just pray that we can take a real life lesson from the life of John the Baptist and the example he provides. Help us as he points, Lord God. Help us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Help us love him more. Help us know you more. And just God bless this study. Bless these words, and Lord, let your word go forth in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we have here an account of the gospel in verse 1, the gut spiel, which is German for good news, the good news of Jesus Christ. And this is the gospel. It's good news that Jesus has been provided, that God has sent his Son into the world, not, con not to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. John 3, 17. Go back a verse, it shows his love. He loved the world so much that he provided his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, and that means will not perish, but have everlasting life. So, we have the gospel, the good news, and thankfully God has provided a way back to peace with him, because otherwise we would be stuck as his enemies. So praise God for the provision of Jesus. So who was this John that scripture records? It's interesting, he must have been really significant, because Isaiah predicted his ministry 740 years before the birth of Christ, and so to this point, about 30 years even after that, John the Baptist comes and his ministry was really twofold. First, to prepare the way of the Lord, and that was ultimately his purpose. But what he also did was he proclaimed the way. And Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life. And we see at the coming of Jesus, John proclaimed, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so John the Baptist is a very faithful man of God, very serious about Jesus. It's very interesting. He's, he's a very extreme guy. We'll get to his biography here in a little bit, a little bit of his profile. Very extreme, but we see also that he just had a heart really soft and humble for Jesus. It's really cool. So, we see John, his ministry was to pre prepare the way and prepare people's hearts for this Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua, the Son of God and the Savior of the world. And he preached a baptism of repentance. We know that John's message, like Jesus's, was repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Matthew 3 verse 2 records that. And Jesus preached the same message as well. But here, here we have the baptism of repentance, where people would come to the Jordan River and be baptized of them. And a lot of people did, and they repented of their sins. They turned away from them, 180 degrees, which is repentance, and they were dunked in this river. So it symbolized, in the long run, we would see this symbolized dying and rising with Christ. It hadn't happened at that point, but we would see that's what ultimately it would present. So dying to your old self and rising to newness of life. So, baptism of those who had not repented, that wasn't done in scripture. We see that some traditions, yeah, there are infants who are baptized and they say that, oh, well, they're saved because they were baptized as an infant. That's definitely not the case. This is not um, something where you're born into a faith in Jesus. It's a personal decision. Those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved, but we see there are some who have hard hearts and, and will not believe and will not turn. And so, it doesn't depend on what you do as an infant, but it's post repentance. And so when you repent, what, you, what do you do? Repent and be baptized. You believe, you have faith in Jesus, and we're not saved by baptism itself, but baptism is the emblem of the saving work. And so it's the external sign of obedience. 
of the inward work that's done. And there's an image there where you take a pickle, and it's got this green old slimy coat, and the word baptizo, it's an agrarian parallel here where you have a, a pickle and you dip it in brine. And so when you dip it in the brine, the green pickle gets this purple coat when you dip it in. And so literally, it's taking on a new coat. And when you put your faith in Jesus and you repent and you're baptized into the body of Jesus, and that's not exactly the same thing as water baptism, but when you're transformed and changed, you're baptized into that body. So you believe in Jesus, you put on a new coat, you put on the coat of Jesus. And the apostles also saw baptism as an of course type of step. And so if you put your faith in Jesus, and this is true today, if you've put your faith in Jesus, be baptized, show it externally. This is an outward sign of your belief inwardly. And so the thief on the cross, he didn't have a chance to get baptized. I'm sure he would have if he had the chance, but still the baptism is not what saves us. We are redeemed through the blood of Jesus. I can think of several passages that state that Ephesians 1, 7, Revelation 1, 5, and many more that we're saved by grace through faith, yet again. It's not the works that we do, or else we could brag, we could boast, but it's by the grace through faith that God provides us. And so, praise God for that too. In verses 6 through 8, we get a profile of this very extreme character, John the Baptist. He had a garment of camel's hair, he had a leather belt around his waist, and he had a very weird diet, locusts and wild honey. I guess whatever floats your boat on that diet. but. We have John the Baptist, very eclectic, wild man type of character. It's interesting what type of comments you'll get online. Regardless of what you wear, you're going to get a comment about what you're wearing. So if it's too formal or if you're wearing a tie, well, Jesus never wore a tie. It's kind of like saying Jesus never drove a minivan. It's like this is a tool that can help us share the gospel. Jesus never used a whiteboard, but we have it today, so why, why not use it to proclaim the gospel? And even more, we see if you're wearing a t-shirt, then people will be like, well, you're not wearing your Sunday best, so do you not care about Jesus because you're not wearing the best clothes? And either way, it depends on what's in your heart. It's not about what you wear. And we see here, what would you say about John the Baptist? Very eclectic guy wearing this crazy garment, but his heart was so humble and so focused on Jesus. And may our lives be like that. So looking at John's essential message here was, I am not the one. But he who is coming, he is coming right after me, and he is the one. He is the Messiah and the Savior of the world. And so let's take that lesson from John. He had so many people following him. His ministry was very fruitful. Herod, as Josephus records, was very fearful of John. But ultimately, here we see John knew his position in the context of Jesus. And may we take that example as well, that even though John was huge in the preparing the way of Jesus, he, his ministry was excellent. And yet he knew that he was not even worthy to do the least of what a servant would be able to do, and unloosing the sandal strap of Jesus. And so, yeah, ultimately we need to know that even though we think we're all that, the world, the world will tell us, oh, it's all about your self-esteem. We need to have God esteem and uh, understand that we are nothing, and apart from him we can do nothing, and that he is everything. And through that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. But it's by His grace we are all unworthy servants who, by God's grace, we can know Him and serve Him and love Him because He first loved us. And so just something to take there as a model from John the Baptist's life that, yeah, <laughs> we need to know our place in the, in the light of Jesus, that we are nothing. We can't even hold a, a candle to Him. Let's look at the next part here that John knew that Jesus would baptize with the Holy Spirit. This involves conversion, transformation, and infilling. John was also filled with the Holy Spirit from the mother's womb. You see in Luke chapter 1, verse 15, For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And that may transform our, our perspective on the life of the unborn as well. And the world will tell you, oh, that's just a, a piece of flesh. But we see numerous times from Scripture, the view is commonly that God has formed us in our womb. He takes an active role in blessing us, and he also knows us from the womb. That Paul said that he was set apart to preach the gospel, even from his mother's womb. David even says, even from the most inward parts, you knew me. Jeremiah says that he knew me even from my mother's womb. And here we have the Holy Spirit filling John the Baptist even from the mother's womb. So we have a respect for the unborn as well, even from this passage. I know it's not the main point here, but just something to take from it. So some lessons to take from the ministry of John the Baptist. He was this mighty man of God, but he was so humble. 
And that's part of the being mighty. Uh, we're not supposed to be like the Pharisees who are just out there for show and to, to look all awesome. Be like, oh man, I'm so great. We're supposed to be as John the Baptist was, an extreme example of humility and saying, well, God has blessed me so much, but he is the great one, it's not me. And so pointing to Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords. And ultimately, we are not the King of kings and Lord of lords. Even though a lot of the world will try to tell you that, we're not. We're not on the throne. God is on the throne, and we need to acknowledge that and not steal his glory and have that as an idol. It's not something we need to do. It's dangerous. And ultimately, too, we need to know our standing in the light of who Jesus is. We can also take some things about Jesus from this passage. Well, first, he is the focus of the gospel, the good news, and he is the provision of good news to us from God the Father. He's also the Son of God. So specifically, he is in fully nature God. He was also fully man when he was here, but he's also specifically the Son of God and displayed here. He was also the one that John predicted he was going to bring about, the Messiah, the chosen one of God who would deliver his people, and again, from their sins. We see also that Jesus is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. In Luke 11, it says that, and even Jesus, Jesus is quoted as saying that if you ask the Father for the Holy Spirit, he will grant it. So if you, being evil, know how to good, give good gifts to your children, how much more will God give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? And so just ask. Ask, seek, knock. And we need to ask in faith. We need to ask properly and in the right motives. We can see that from James that we can ask with the wrong motives as, as well, and then we won't receive. But ultimately, we need to ask him humbly, ask him faithfully, and ask him believing. And in Mark eleven twenty four, as though we've already received it. And so praising God for his provision. You know, the first thing he did in Genesis, after he created male and female, Adam and Eve, we see that in Genesis 1, 28, he says, be fruitful and multiply. But even before that, he blessed them. And he wants to bless you today. And he's provided Jesus as a blessing for you. And may you know him. If you haven't put your faith in Jesus, I would encourage you so much. Just put your faith in Jesus. Trust in him. It's not something blind. We're not supposed to believe without evidence. But we see this world created around us. It's fallen. It's stained by sin. And yet we can have redemption through Jesus Christ and through him alone. So if you've not put your faith in Christ, put your faith in Christ. If you have not been baptized, take that step of obedience and be baptized. It's a great step in following after Jesus. And we'll talk about this more in this next segment as well. But ultimately, be humble, follow Jesus, and trust in him. God bless you, and I hope to see you next segment. But before we close, let's pray. Father, bless everyone who's watching even this video. Thank you so much for your word and, and its message. We praise you for the, the ministry of John the Baptist and his preparing the way for the Messiah, Jesus. We praise you so much for Jesus and providing him as a sacrifice for our sins. We just praise you so much for your generosity and your grace that even though you did not have to provide a way back, you did because you desired us to be with you. You desired to bless us. God, help us bless others. Help us be a conduit for blessing and a vessel of blessing. God, bless us and help us bless others. Forgive us our sins. We confess those to you. And God, just help us have pure hands. Or what am I saying? A clean hands and a pure heart. Just praise you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. And yeah, I'll see you next segment, I guess. <laughs> Till then, God bless you.